All right, hello folks. Welcome to Culture Anthropology. My name is Moises Munoz Plasencia. I will be your instructor, your guide through the wonderful field of cultural anthropology. All right, so thank you for taking this course. It's at Anna College. All right, once again, this is Cultural Anthropology, Anthro 100. So if you're watching this video and are mistakenly in this class, all right, uh, please make sure to drop if you need to. All right, so welcome. All right, so I've been working here in Santa Ana for a very long time, and I'm an organizer, community organizer. I'm also an environmentalist and a humanist. All right, so I want to welcome you all right, to the course. All right, so a brief kind of uh, <clears throat> overview of what we're going to be talking about in the next five minutes is we're going to be discussing a quick introduction to myself, right? And uh, trust me, we'll have a lot of time to discuss things uh, and hopefully maybe even chat about things, right? And uh, we're also going to go through the Canvas course. We're going to go through the Canvas course, which will be online. And we're also going to go through the syllabus, right? Uh, briefly go to the syllabus, right? So let's go ahead and, and get started, right? And let's talk about some of the things um, in this introduction, right? So when I was seven years old, I said I want to be the first Mexican to do something with, with his life. Now, you can replace that with Cambodian or even French. Now, I want you to take a minute and reflect critically about what this question or what this statement actually means. So at, a, at seven years old, why would somebody say something like this? Right now, think about your own self, right? Think about what, why would you have said something like this? If this was your younger sibling, why would they say something like this, right? And think about what are the layers or the institutions that connect to you at seven years old? And what would influence a statement like this? So this statement always reminds me of why I got into cultural anthropology, where right? kind of um, echoes through my experiences today to make me think critically about all others around me and about the importance of this field, all right? So take a minute and think about that, right? And let's carry on, all right? So uh, one of the first elements of identifying self, right? Identifying who you are is to think about uh, your local nomenclature, right? Now my local, local <coughs> nomenclature is Santanero, meaning that I am from Santa Ana, right? Now, um, that is a kind of the first onion of self, understanding where you're from, right? Then looking and reflecting upon what your culture represents, right? So I identified as Mexican when I was younger, right? I still do in some ways, right? And as American in other ways, right? Now, uh, I start to look into music. One of the first stops in any uh, person's an introduction to Mexican music is with this person, right? Vicente Fernandez, right? Now, Vicente Fernandez is a, uh, what I call the, he's the Frank Sinatra of Mexican music, right? So very popular, right? So his music is full of poetry. His music is full of uh, emotion, right? So it made me, t it made me think cri uh, critically about, once again, this statement, was I the first Mexican to do some, something with his life? And obviously it was not. Now, taking the next step, I went into some of the historical archaeological evidence of uh, folks who come from Mexico. Right now, this is from the Codex Borgia, right? And if you take a look at this image, right, this image reflects these two different deities. One is the god of light. One is the god of death. Right now, this idea of duality, right, of life and death dancing together constantly is a very important thing to think about, right, because other cultures have also developed it, right. So at one point when I was seven, I thought I came from a baseless culture, right, a foundation of nothing, right. But as I explored and became more connected with the ideas, then it made me think critically about what it meant to be Mexican-American. Um, now, this is Freda Kahlo. Now, Freda Kahlo is a very famous feminist artist, right? And she uh, represents so many things. She's an icon, right? And made me also connect this idea that there are strong women in, in my culture, right? Now, this is an image uh, located here in Santa Ana, right? Uh, it says La Raza, right? Which is, uh, this is graffiti, right? Uh, on a wall. And this graffiti on a wall uh, is kind of a metaphorical example of what it meant to be Mexican-American, having a bordered identity, right? Being there, but not really wanted there, right? Or at least that's how I felt when I was younger, right? Now, quick question for you, is this graffiti or art? Now, this is a set, another image of a famous art piece, right? Developed by one of the first art pieces located in El Castillo in Spain. El Castillo, once again, in Spain. Now, what this makes me think about is what are the regulations that they had put on them? Is this graffiti or is this art? 
right, marinate on that question. Pretty good. Right now, um, <clears throat> growing up in Santa Ana wasn't the best, right? It was kind of hard, right? So uh, there was a lot of gang violence, a lot of uh, tra traumatic experiences, right? Drug use and whatnot, right? And I would love to share more stories about that later, right? Uh, but yeah, it was very, it was very tough to grow up in Santa Ana, right? But uh, making it out, right? Uh, I went to, uh, one of the best ways to make it out was through education. So I went through, I went to Santa Ana College. Right. And then I went from there to the University of Santa Cruz. And from there, I took I had some internships, one in the Yucatan Peninsula, where I lived with the Maya. Right. For four months. Right. And then the next following year, I spent some time in the state of Chiapas. Right. Which is one of the, another southern state of Mexico. Right. And I, I studied food. Right now, from this experience, I came back to Santa Ana and I started to think critically about uh, the importance of food. Right, so uh, how many people do you know that are diabetic, right? that have hypertension, that are, have high cholesterol? Right now, this made me think critically about how food can work to develop culture and also autonomy. Right now, I got my master's from uh, from Cal State Long Beach in cultural anthropology. Right, and um, I actually still farm today. Right, so this is uh, an image here at the Heritage Museum of Orange County. I'll welcome you all out there when I when all this <clears throat> uh, COVID stuff gets arranged. Right now, this, this is a very, this is a famous quote by uh, Ruth Benedict: "The purpose of anthropology is to make the world safe for human differences." Now, do you think the world is safe for human differences today? Yes or no? Why or why not? So think about that question and we'll continue. All right, now, as an anthropologist, you are all officially cultural anthropologists, so I just to let you know the pay is crappy and the their benefits are sucky, right? So welcome, welcome. All right now, what does it mean? Now, for most folks, culture is developed of four important things, right? Language, stuff and artifacts, traditions, and history. Meaning that we all have a language that we speak, Right, we all have a history that we're connected to. Right, we all have stuff that we wear. Now, I could not wear a dashiki, right, because a dashiki is meant for Nigerian royalty. Now, I could wear an angel hat because I love the angels. Right. Now, in terms of traditions, we have things like uh, Asian New Year's, right, and we also have things such as Cinco de Mayo, right, or we have things like Dia de los Muertos, Day of the Dead. Right now, all of these things connect to who we are as as a culture, right? So I want you to think about all of these elements, right? Think about yourself, right? But let's take a quick break and let's take let's go into uh, looking at the course in Canvas. All right, so here we go. We have the course here. Right, this is the course in Canvas. Right now, if you're looking at what I'm looking at, right, you can see that we have our our home page. Right now, our home page will give you a course description and link you to important elements, important modules. All right. Uh, we also have announcements, which we'll use later. We also have our modules, right? Now our modules will give us critical information that we need, right? Uh, for the course right in here, there's a plethora of resources for you. Right now, uh, if you need a tutor, right? You have a net tutor available for you as well. Right. And here we have, um, some of the course information, right, which will be utilized for you, right? And this is also, this is your introduction, right? So you'll find all of your courses here, right? And I've labeled them neatly here, right? So I've given you uh, a text outline, right? So you have your lectures and modules here, grades and assignments, right? So um, and the additional readings will be found here, right? And we have all the material here. Right, please go through the um, through the course uh, one after another because there is a purpose. Uh, there's a purpose for having the course outlined in the way it is, All right? So in terms of the syllabus, take a quick look at the syllabus. Right, we have the syllabus here. Right, the syllabus is uh, nicely, neatly outlined for you. Right, so uh, you have everything here, so you can kind of have, uh, if you have any questions about my contact, about where we're, we're at in the class, right, what we should be covering, course description, everything is here for you, right, uh, and if you do have any questions, please let me know. All right, folks, well, this is uh, just an introductionary video, right, but if you have, do have any other questions, please make sure to ask the, the questions 
in the question module, right? So we, sh we do have this section for general questions, right? So if you have any questions about anything, we have this discussion board that you can use for general questions that I will try to connect to as much as possible. Okay, well, thank you so much. Have a great day, and I'll see you. Well, I won't see you, but I'll talk to you soon.